The Zelda games have a ridiculous amount of characters, from more traditional fantasy tropes like dark wizards bent on world domination, all the way to characters like a crocodile who eats tinned dog food or a hand sticking out of a toilet. Zelda characters can be really weird, even all the way back in the original, where you find moblins who'll give you rupees, or old men who'll ask you to pay for door repairs after blowing open the entrance to their caves. Maybe Link's the weird one there. Ever since the original, Hyrule and the series' various other countries and dimensions have been home to a host of unique and interesting characters. So today, let's run through some highlights. As I often try to do on this channel, let's try and keep the list relatively obscure, with hopefully at least one or two strange characters you might not know about, or at the very least some interesting details about characters you do. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's get into it. Beginning the list with one of the most infamous characters from Adventure of Link. Era is apparently a bearded, somewhat middle-aged man wearing a purple tunic, a sprite shared with a few other NPCs in the game. He's found in a house in Ruto Town, and when spoken to, will only respond with, I am Era. This is all Era will say, no matter what Link does. However, later on, in Mido Town, a man will tell the player to ask Era of Ruto about the island palace. Returning to Ruto Town, Link can ask Era, who will now reply, South of King's Tomb in Mido is a tunnel. And that's it. That's the clue on how to access the game's third dungeon, and that's the entire purpose of Era. His strange name, and the fact that at first he'll only respond with, I am Era, initially led many to believe that his name was, in fact, an Era, and the game was somehow incorrectly reading his name. But this isn't the case. There's a man found north of Saria Town who Link needs to talk to in order to cross the river. His name, Bagu, means bug in Japanese, as in a computer bug. This was meant to fit together with Era, who is also called Era in Japanese, to form a pair of characters both named after problems with computers. But only Era's name was translated into English, so Bagu remains Bagu, and the connection isn't clear. Ironically, Era's name isn't the Era here, Bagu's is. Old Man Ulrira serves as a guide throughout Link's Awakening. He's really shy, so if Link visits him in his house in Mabe Village, he won't talk, but can instead be reached by telephone, through one of the phone booths around the island. Obviously, calling from one of these phones will connect to the phone in Ulrira's house, but what if we call from his phone? Well, a character called the Bucket Mouse picks up, thanks us for calling, and then hangs up. Brilliant. So, who is this Bucket Mouse? Where are they calling from? Just like Error, the truth about the Bucket Mouse lies in mistranslation. In the original Japanese, calling from Ulrira's phone will result in Link reaching something called Bucket Mouth. According to Kazuaki Morita, who worked as a programmer on the game, Bucket Mouth was apparently a real fishing shop in Japan which closed in 2010, the owner of which apparently inspired the fishing hole man from Ocarina of Time. So, somewhere in translation, Bucket Mouth became the Bucket Mouse, a bizarre, non-existent rodent. To go even more obscure, there's another unseen character here. If we pick up Ulrira's phone in the French version of the game, and only the French version, none other than Madonna will answer, making her, technically, a Zelda character. Ori Tamu was apparently a famous chef, celebrated and studied by the residents of Gerudo Town. A class taught by Ashe focuses on his books, of which there are two volumes where we can learn more about this mysterious chef. The first book details meals with special effects, elixirs, and cooking with fairies, and the second covers cooking with boosted effects, monster extracts, and cooking for monetary gain. From the two volumes, we learn a few things. The author was impatient, terrified of insects, and went to bed early. But more interestingly is that these books could be hiding a pretty subtle reference to Tingle. Ori Tamu claims that he learned everything from a dear friend who was a great chef, but that he can't recall his name. He also claims that he's been a pure soul for over 35 years, and that he expects he'll get his own fairy soon. It's mentioned in multiple games that Tingle is 35 years old, and is of course obsessed with fairies. Might Oritamu's dear friend whose name escapes him have been Tingle? 
Or perhaps was Ori Tamu Tingle himself? Either way, it seems like Ori met an unfortunate end. It's hinted that there existed a love triangle between the chef, Ashe, and Isha, the owner of the jewellery shop, but that it ended tragically. We know that Ori Tamu was only around 35 when he wrote his cookbooks, so perhaps he met an untimely end. The Wind Waker sees Ganon return to power like lightning from a blue sea, kidnapping young girls from across the world and imprisoning them within the Forsaken Fortress in his hunt to find Princess Zelda. The fortress is a dark, eerie structure in the northwest of the Great Sea, manned by Bokoblins and Moblins. Moblins in particular serve as guards in the fortress, shambling through its dim corridors with spears and lanterns. Among the young girls imprisoned here was Maggie, originally from a very poor family on Windfall Island. However, Maggie brings back with her countless valuable skull necklaces, which the family sell in return for obscene wealth. These skull necklaces were given to Maggie by Mo, a moblin from the Forsaken Fortress. Apparently, Maggie and Mo were close during her captivity. She describes him as the sweet boy who gave her all those expensive necklaces when she left that cursed island. Maggie writes letters to Mo, and when she doesn't receive replies, she becomes depressed. She'll do nothing but pine over her lost swine. Eventually, though, Mo does write back, this is Mo. I like you, Maggie, so much that I want to eat you for dinner. Maggie takes this to mean that Mo is proposing to her, and that's how the story's left. Mo's a really obscure, really weird Zelda character. It's a pretty disturbing relationship, but Mo is not only able to write, but apparently cared for Maggie enough to give her countless skull necklaces when she left the fortress. We never explicitly see Mo in game unless he's one of the countless anonymous moblins cut to ribbons by Link. Sorry, Maggie. Now, Oru isn't a particularly obscure character by any means. He's a member of the Resistance, and so plays a relatively big part in the story of Twilight Princess, or at least impacts the story far more than any of the other characters on this list. From what we learn in game, Oru seems knowledgeable about the secrets of the royal family, but still appears to be somewhat of an outsider. He claims that the sages once served the royal family, tutoring a young Princess Zelda, and it was from these sages that Oru learned of the Twilight Mirror. We don't learn anything else about Oru's history, except that he's renowned for the knowledge he's gathered over his many years. However, just like with Era and Bagu or the Bucket Mouse, there's something lost in translation. In the Japanese version of Twilight Princess, instead of claiming that the sages tutored Zelda, Oru claims to have tutored her himself when she was younger, which adds a whole new level to the character. This isn't just a wise old man, he was once so closely connected with the royal family that he was appointed to teach the princess, which is a really interesting detail that didn't make it across to the English release. Thanks for watching this video. Who are your favourite obscure Zelda characters? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.